You're watching Democratically Speaking. Mark Linder, your host, uh, chairman of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. And today I have another show, and I'm bringing you another candidate, a new face to political office, Susan DeCastro. Welcome, Susan. Thank you, Mark. Nice to see you. Thank you. Um, I commend anybody that puts the name on the ballot, having done it myself a number of times. You were a member of the Brockton Planning Board. What got you into this race? I'm concerned about the issues. I've lived in Brockton for 25 years. I'm married to a Brockton native, John Tuig. We're raising our children in Brockton. We have two sons, Edward and Benjamin. John is a fifth generation Brocktonian. He's been here for, and his people forever. Um, there's a lot of issues that really concern me, most especially uh, public safety, um, education, and keeping our children busy and safe, healthy. Um, I'm concerned about economic development, um, care and well-being of our seniors, um, using our city tax money wisely and using our city resources wisely, and fighting the war against opiate drugs and their impacts on our Brockton families. Now, being on the planning board, there are a lot of people that have come out of the planning board that have run for city office. Uh, yes. Councilor Robert Sullivan would be one of them. Yes. Who's on the ballot with you. Yes. There, in the preliminary election, there are eight choices, and in the final election in November, there are four, because there's four at-large councilors and you're running at-large. Um, do you think that's good preparation to be a city councilor? Yes. The planning board is a wonderful place to spend five years. It's a five-year appointment. It's also a very challenging job. I think planning board and school committee are probably the most difficult boards to be appointed to from the point of view of the amount of work that you have to do. Um, My dad was on the planning board for five years and okay. he actually voted against a project, the Hilton Hotel project, mm -hmm. because the neighbors didn't want it. We were in Ward 1, we lived on Ash Street, George Pappas was the counselor at the time, George says go with the neighbors, that's what my dad did. The next thing he did is he found himself not reappointed by a different mayor to by the planning the board. Yes, that can happen. Okay. Yes. Um, on the planning board, and I know I have to be careful. First of all, I know you're an attorney, yes. so you know all the issues with legal. Yes. Um, the power plant. You can't say too much about it, but the question that I ask everybody, and if you can't answer it, you can say I can't answer it, but you've been on record against it, correct? Yes. Okay. And what can you say one way or the other? about the whole power plant issue? Well, you know, with large projects, the power plant being one of them, the whole issue is location, 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 because we need power plants mm -hmm. in our country. But the location that's proposed for this power plant is in the middle of a densely populated area. And some people have raised concerns, valid concerns, about the impacts of having such a, a business around children and the elderly um, because of the, the uh, toxins and particulate matter that come out of it. Um, it it's, it's a really, um, it's been proven that there is a connection between the two. So I, I can't help but be worried about the health of people. I can tell you it's horrible to be sued personally in a case like this and it is definitely true that because I'm a, an officer of the court and also a defendant in this case, I really can't talk about the case. Um, but I would say this, why would good people raise concerns about a project um, uh, you know, and, and not be taken seriously? Um, that's one thought. And the other thing is, really, this is a suit by investors in a highly risky, highly speculative project um, who aren't getting their way. And, and that's something to think about, too. Mm -hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, are you in Ward 4? I live in Ward 4. Okay, and Ward 4 is the butter, so to speak, to the power plant. 
I mean, I live about as far away as you can get. I'm on the Stoughton Eastern Brockton line over near the Goddard Hospital. Okay, I didn't take a position on it for a long period of time until I ran for state rep, and then I had to take a position because doing running the TV station, I wanted to make sure both parties felt that they were treated equally and fairly. We did a couple of forums on it. It's never been put to the voters. It was there was never even a non-binding referendum on the power plant. Yet you see a lot of stop the power signs. There's still a very involved group in the city. This is still an issue. I've been covering elections here for 21 years at Brockton Community Access. More than half of that time, we've been talking about this issue. This goes back to the Harrington administration. Oh, it goes back even further. To the Eunice administration. I believe so. so. I mean. Not commenting on the lawsuit, and then I'll change the subject because there's plenty of other stuff to talk about. Okay. I'm just wondering what your opinion is on the mayor settling the whole thing. The council, is, we have a plan B form of government. We have a, it, it, people always refer to it as strong council, weak mayor. Mayor settled it. Council, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't think that he had the authority to settle that. The meeting behind closed doors, they have executive session. Executive session law allows people to meet for purposes of litigation. That's one of the few reasons you can meet for executive session. Um, you could be sitting in that room come January. You could be part of the executive session because I assume it's still going to be going on in January. What do you think about what you've heard, uh, what, what's been reported? Can't, I mean, if you can't comment, no problem. You can just tell me that. I, I'm, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to make this one issue, but I know that you've kind of been on the forefront of this issue on the planning board, which you're no longer on. That's right. My appointment ended. So? Um, well, I can't really comment on what happens in the executive session of the city council because I'm not there, and mm -hmm. they're obliged to keep it confidential. Um, as for the case, I, I can procedurally tell you that um, the case was last in front of the judge in March, in late March of this year, and the judge put a stay on the case for six months. So later this month, September 20-something, the, the parties will go back into court to revisit the case and to report back the, to the judge mm -hmm. as to, uh, I guess, uh, there's supposed to be negotiations between the city council and the, the plaintiffs. Um, there are a host of other defendants as well who are not involved in any of the, the negotiations and we really, well I, I can only speak for myself, I don't know what's happening or if anything is happening. My colleague Wade McAllister who's on the school committee with me for Southeastern is a defendant. There are different city councils that are defendants. That's right. It's, you know, I always say you get on a board, the last thing you ever want to see happen to yourself is to get sued individually because the city doesn't, I think still to this day, have liability insurance that covers people. They'll defend you, but you know, I've always, I, I'm on boards and commissions, nonprofits that have board of directors and officers liability insurance. So let, let's switch gears. You talked about the issues that concern you that brought you into the race. Okay, there's a proposal on the table and I want to make sure we we tell the Susan the Castro story, who you are and why you're running. We also leave you time at the end to do a little summation and in legal terms and why we should vote for you, how people can get in touch with you. But in the meantime, on issues, you listed a, a whole bunch of issues that concern you. Mm -hmm. You're probably going out and talking to the voters I as am. you're running. Yes. What are you hearing from the voters? What are the issues that they get, the same issues you mentioned? Are you getting different opinions from people? What are you hearing when you're knocking on doors? The, the issue that comes up most often is crime. Mm -hmm. um, people are very concerned. I've talked to a number of people who had acts of crime happen on their street or in their neighborhood. Um, it's frightening, um, especially if you have children, but in any event, it's very frightening. I'm also hearing about um, taxes, revenues. Mm -hmm. um, many people that I speak with are on a fixed income, and just don't know what they'll do if their taxes go up. Love Brockton have spent their lives here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a huge concern. I've also had people mention the homeless, mm -hmm. um, the numbers of homeless that are around. It upsets them and their young families as they drive across town to see this. Um, that's a lot of it. We deal with that every day. 
yeah. right next door to this location. building is Mainspring House. Um, That's right. My dad, when he retired, was executive director over there for 18 months. He went from being in parole and corrections to being in the director of Mainspring House. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're affected by it almost every single day, and uh, my phone's ringing, which I can't answer, but that's okay. Um, what I wanted to say is, there's a lot of issues. How do you prioritize those? I mean, you're an attorney. You get a case. You deal with what the issues are that come to the forefront. How do you decide when you're sitting up there? You get a budget that the mayor submits. Council can only cut the budget. You can't add to it. You can't shift it. What are the priorities? What do you think the priorities are from what you're hearing from the voters that you're talking to? Or what would you make a priority? Maybe what's your, what would be your number one priority if you got to the city council? My one, number one priority has to be public safety. Mm -hmm. We have to be safe in our homes and in our neighborhoods. Right now, as everyone knows, crime in Brockton, especially violent crime, is out of control. I believe we have to have an adequate number of police staffing our police department, mm -hmm. and we have to have good police cruisers that don't have 150,000 miles or that kind of mileage on them to support our police. Um, I'm concerned about management of funds that went to the police department. I'm concerned that uh, we didn't really need policemen on motorcycles um, who mostly just rode around and made a statement that way. I'm concerned that we didn't need multiple and extra police chiefs and have to pay for all of them. I'm concerned about gadgets and devices that cost a lot of money. Now, technology has its place, and as time goes on, it's a very important factor in policing from everything that I've read. But I, I want and I think we need a shot stopper, not a shot spotter. Mm -hmm. And I think we stop the shots with adequate community, community policing by an adequate number of police. That all takes money. Yes, okay, it does. You mentioned taxes. Yes. Okay. Um, city get, council gets to set the tax rate. Yes. They have to balance it business and residential. Okay. We have a pretty high business tax rate, but if you take that away from the businesses, the homeowners are going to pay for it. What do you think we need to do to bring in revenue to the city? One thing the mayor's been saying is we need to bring in more revenue. We need to bring in revenue from the power plant. We need to bring in revenue from the casino. We need to bring in all sorts of revenue. How do you bring in revenue to pay for the priorities? Well, using those projects as revenue sources sounds really good, mm -hmm. but those projects are, and realizing tax money from them are a few years down the road, and we need this money last month, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. judging by the crime that just does not abate. Um, and so I think we look to taxes last. I think we look to alternative sources of funding, grant writing, obviously. Um, we, we look to fee structure, what we charge for different things in the city. Um, we, we try to get it every other way but by raising our taxes. I've studied our tax rate and compared it to other gateway cities. Um, it's not the highest and certainly it's not the lowest. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, so many people have mentioned taxes to me. I would hopefully want to avoid raising taxes unless there was no other way. Mm -hmm. um, relationship between the mayor and the city council. It's been strained, this current administration. It's been strained in other administrations before. Sure. How do people work with and get along to not get along to go along, but get along to p move the city forward and progress? There is uh, One of your opponents is using a slogan, moving Brockton forward together. Okay, mm -hmm. I had that candidate on. Mm -hmm. Not a slogan or a gimmick, but what's your strategy for getting the council and the mayor's office, whoever the mayor is, to work together? Well, first of all, everyone has to know their roles. I, I think it's a great idea to sit down and read the charter so that you understand, and the corresponding state law, so that you understand what the council's purpose is and its powers and duties, and the same for the mayor. Um, the mayor is the executive, uh, the executive who runs day to day on the city. The council has, as you discussed, 
um, they have the right to, to review the budget. They can take away, they can't add. Council has a host of other things that they do, appointments and such. Yes, they have to work together, but they also have to know what their roles are and not step on each other's toes as much as possible. In, as you say, a Plan B government, it's a weak mayor and a strong city council. And so everyone has to respect that and work with it. Earlier this year, outgoing city councilor Jay Stewart proposed that we look at city government. We look at the structure of city government. We sit down and read the charter and maybe we look into changing the structure of city government. Any thoughts on that? I don't, I, I've recently reviewed all the different plans for, for government varieties that are listed in the statute. I, I don't currently see a need to change anything. I just see a need to know what your role is and to work with it. Okay. Um, talk about you. I know firsthand because I shared it, I, you've been on the board at the Charity Guild for years. I, th yes. I think, are you the chair now? I am not. Okay, but you have been. What about your community experience, your volunteer experience? Let's go back to you. What do okay. you have to offer and what have you contributed in the past so people would have the confidence in you to vote for you to be elected? Okay, well as I mentioned, I'm a 25 year resident. Mm -hmm. I moved to Brockton when I married my husband, John Tuick. We're raising our children here. And actually, as you know, last week we brought both of our children. Our younger son started college as a freshman. Mm -hmm. They both left next week. My, or last week, my nest is officially empty. Mm -hmm. And that is a factor in my running for a counselor at large at this time. So I am an attorney. I've been an attorney for more than 30 years. My practice of law has traditionally um, focused on representing buyers, sellers, and lenders in the purchase, sale, and financing of homes, businesses, and, um, real and commercial properties. Mm -hmm. um, I I'm committed to the vibrant civic and community organizations of Brockton. As you mentioned, I recently finished five years on the planning board. Two years of it were spent on the Zoning Board of Appeals as well, since the Planning Board has one seat on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. I worked very hard in those five years to maintain or improve the quality of Brockton's neighborhoods. Um, I very much liked my work um, for the Planning Board, although it takes a, a couple of years really to get up to speed on the Planning Board. Um, I've also been a volunteer for 16 years at the Charity Guild most of those 16 years at Main Street in Brockton. The Charity Guild is a wonderful organization that helps many families, many of them from Brockton. It provides basic necessities of life to them. The Charity Guild operates a food pantry and a thrift store. Mm -hmm. um, and I should tell you, Mark, the need in Brockton is just so great and it just never abates. Last year, more than 50% of the Charity Guild's clients were seniors and children. Mm -hmm. It's a great organization. Um, Finally, I should tell you that on a personal note, yes, I'm a mother to two teenage sons, an interesting job. I've also been, until very, fairly recently, a caregiver to my own mother. My mother lived with me for five years. She ro relocated to our home from out of state because she had vascular dementia. And so, if you will, my family and I walked her home. She lived with us for five years as she declined and then finally did die. I'd have to say it was the hardest thing I've ever done, being a, a caregiver to my mother. And it has really informed um, my view of the world, um, especially in the years since she has passed on. Mm -hmm. So you see, uh, my civic um, involvement at the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals, my volunteer involvement at the Charity Guild, and my personal involvement as caregiver to my mother. All of these things have educated me and given me experience and really inform my decision to run for counselor at large on the Brockton City Council. And I think th I, they will serve me well if I am elected, or I should say when I am elected. There you go. Be confident. That's, That's right. good. Um, I'm dealing with similar issues as we were talking yes, off camera with, with parents and mm -hmm. I always feel that um, they've given to you. 
Yes. You got to give back. Yes. I'm very fortunate that I even have them at the age that they are. Uh, they taught me to get involved civically. That's why I got involved. I went to Brockton High. I always tell everybody the story was Jimmy Carter came and spoke in 1975 to our class, mm -hmm. the same class I was in with your husband. That's right. And that's what inspired me to get involved. And look at him at 90 years old. There were a lot of people that didn't like him as president. I think he did a lot of good things. Um, he wasn't politically savvy, that's for sure. That's right. But he almost brokered an agreement between Israel and Egypt. He was very close to doing that. He mm -hmm. did he has goods and bads, and unfortunately, the Iran hostage crisis took over, and that's right. that pretty much ended his presidency. And I'm sure Teddy Kennedy didn't help that at all. Any yeah. anyway, our Massachusetts senator. Yeah. But that's what got me involved. I got involved when I was 14 mm -hmm. in politics. 36 years later, I'm a 20-year member of the library board. So. You know, it's it, it's good to be involved in your community. That's what my parents taught me, and they were always involved, so it makes a lot of sense. So, why don't you? I'm going to give you a the two minute closing. Okay. But if there's anything you want to talk about your campaign, how to get involved, how to contact you, I don't know if you have any events coming up before the primary. We are going to do a council at large debate and have all nine, of, all 13 of you in the studio at once. That'll yeah. be like being an air traffic controller. I did it yeah. two years ago. We can do it again. That's but next what week. do you want? It is next week. What do you want to say to the voters? What it, about how to help you get elected? Well, I'd like to say my name is Susan Nicastro. I'm running for the open seat on the, on the Broughton City Council, Councilor at Large. Um, I chose to live in Brockton with my husband. I chose to raise my children here. I love Brockton. Brockton is such an interesting place to live. I love the neighborhoods of Brockton. Nearly all of them are fine neighborhoods. Um, so many of the homes are so well kept. I love the people of Brockton. The diversity of the Brockton's population is truly one of its greatest strengths um, and something that I love about it. I've learned so much about other cultures since I live here. Um, I'm a new face. Um, I'm doing this at a particular time in my life when my children have just both left for college. I would love to serve Brockton. I have experience. I have training as an attorney and talents. And I have the passion to help Brockton. Brockton is facing some big challenges, but I truly believe we can get past them. We can make ourselves better working together. Um, there are a lot of people running for the four counselor at large seats. I'd be so grateful if people would vote for me. I, I, I'm among the few candidates for counselor at large who has the training and the experience to do this job and do it well. I can honestly say that if I'm, when I'm elected, excuse me, let's be confident. Um, I will read most everything. I will ask a lot of questions, and I will be my sassy self, all to better Brockton, all to serve our community. Um, I should tell you that um, I, I have no relatives that work for the city. Um, that um, I'm having not grown up here, having grown up elsewhere. Um, I bring a fresh perspective, but yet it's educated by 25 years here. Please vote for me. I would love your support. How do people get in touch with you? I know you have a website on I, the calendar. I have a website. I mean, on the poster, yep, sorry. www.susannicastro.com. I also have a Facebook page. Okay. And you've been out, uh, you dropped my neighborhood. I had a piece of literature right. that's on there. Um, it's hard to run citywide. Citywide mm -hmm. is huge. It's almost like in a sense, you're running for mayor. Yes. Okay. How many people? Uh, how much have you been out? How many people have you talked to? Uh, I just had a candidate in there from a specific ward. Yes. He says he's hit a thousand doors. That's yes. quite an accomplishment because I did it, and I'll tell you, it was great because I lost 15 pounds. I enjoyed very much walking, and talking to people. Well, I would like that part if that would kick in. <laughs> um, I, I've hit. Homes. I've talked to a lot of people on the phone. I've been attending um, community events. I have a lot more to do. I'll be working right up to the night before and probably the day of the, the election. Um, it's a lot of work. I, I weighed whether to go for my ward, Ward 4, and run against Mr. Sudensky, or whether to go at large. I'm very comfortable going at large, and I think part of that is because on the planning board in the ZBA, I considered applications for properties that are all over the city. So I kind of got to know the city. I got used to a citywide approach. Also, I'm interested in um, 
projects and issues that affect all parts of the city and not just word for um, so it seemed appropriate to do this even though it's a lot harder I haven't asked anybody this question but it just came to me a mentor or someone you admire that if you got elected you would choose to follow in that person's footsteps whether it be someone in office or someone that is a volunteer serving people oh I have many mentors at the Charity Guild, um, too, too numerous to mention, um, but I'll try. Um, Maureen Campbell, Florence McNamara, um, uh, Peggy Lang, and so many others, L Laureen Frederick, people who've just devoted years of their life to serving the mission of the Charity Guild. On the political front, there are two public servants in particular that I look to um, as role models and they are Geraldine Creedon and also Linda Belzani. Um, I, I just think the world of both of them. And Geraldine Creedon was, has been a supporter of the Charity Guild forever. Yes, and she is on the board with me, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So um, do you think that, I think you've already said it, skills as an attorney will be specifically helpful to being a city councilor. I know we have uh, Robert Sullivan who's on the, the, the city council yes. who's an attorney. Do you think that's helpful? I, I really do. Um, there is so much reading to do and there have been so many contracts that have come in front of the council in the last couple of years. Um, I think I could make a difference reading them, commenting on them, suggesting you know tweaks and this and that. Yes, I do. Two contracts that keep getting mentioned, the desal contract yes. and the sewer contract with Stonehill College. Yes. You are an attorney. I'm going to, it's like, I got to give you a minute for this because we get three minutes left and I want to make sure you can do one final wrap up. Okay. Opinion, thoughts, advice. Well, they're not, I haven't been hired to advise them, so I, I won't do that, but I will, I will observe. I've recently reviewed several of the Aquaria contracts, the original one from the early 2000s, the letter of intent, um, and the, uh, the consultant's report. And, um, and I will say I wish I was on the council when these things were, when these first two documents were drafted. I think I could have made a difference in that initial Aquaria contract. Um, I have a lot of questions about it that I would have liked to have asked. The letter of intent that was signed, I think it's my opinion that um, unless the city council ratifies it, it's not real, is my opinion. Um, and so that's something I hope they would keep in mind. I, I'd also like to say that the city council has a mechanism for reviewing contracts and financial budgets and things like that. The Acts of 19, let's see, what is it? It's Chapter 324 of the Acts of 1990. And it was passed at the time when um, Brockton was in very poor financial shape. You were here then. Mm -hmm. I was getting married that year. I was very busy. But I do remember reading about it. Well, Section 6 of that Act gives the City Council the power to ask the City Auditor to review all these kinds of contracts financial things and give them an opinion that's independent of the opinion of the CFO or the mayor. It's a very important mechanism that they have for reviewing things that I don't see them use mm -hmm. that I think is worth mentioning. Um, as for the contract with Stonehill, I, I've only looked at it very quickly once. Um, I always shudder when people say a contract is ironclad. Right. I just got the rap kill. Okay. Believe it or not, we could have talked for another half an hour. Sure. Thank you for being on. Thank you for Good having luck me. Good luck with your candidacy, and we'll see you at the Council at Large. Debate. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. You're watching uh, Democratically Speaking. Mark Lenny, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates on the show uh, that are running for office, but most of all on September 22nd. Exercise your right and vote.